Hi, and welcome to the new Investors My Story. Joining me today is Australia's most well known publicist and celebrity agent. Please welcome Max Markson. Thank you. How are you, Max? I'm spectacularly well today. Do you always come across that way, spectacularly well. Thanks very much for joining us. And then most people here in the audience, well, most people know who you are, but can you just explain, just to start us off, what, you, what it is you do? I get publicity <laughs> in the media. So I hustle journalists all day long and TV show producers and get publicity for my clients on uh, TV, press, radio, magazine, online. And publicity is when you get free exposure as opposed to having to pay for it. So it's different to advertising. Advertising, you buy 30 second advertisements or you buy radio ads or you buy space in the newspaper or online. And yeah. I just, I have to find an angle to get it for free. <laughs> what about other, the other feathers in your bow? Um, I'm very privileged to have done over 200 charity events and given over $40 million to charity. Wonderful. And as part of that, I've hosted Nelson Mandela, President Clinton's toured for me four times, President Bush Senior, Rudy Giuliani, uh, Vice President Al Gore, Tony Blair, Mike yeah. Tyson, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Pele, Sugar Ray Leonard, Joe Frazier, like just an incredible celebrity lineup. Kim Kardashian, did you mention Kim Kardashian? I looked Kardashian? after Kim Kardashian. We did a promotion for Michael Hill, the jewelers. Yeah. And uh, I spent three weeks on the road with Sir Michael Hill. It was Michael then, now it's Sir Michael. Yes. Uh, we gave away a 22 carat diamond ring. We had Kim Kardashian launch it in New York. Amazing. In October 2010. And then we took Kim to Chicago and to Toronto. And then we had the winner of this world's best couple competition. And we brought uh, Kim back again and the winners to New York to give them the diamond. It's quite the lineup of celebrities that you've worked with over the last while. So we'll just, if we go to back to the beginning and when you started it, you started um, your agency in 1982. Correct. Marks and Sparks started in 82. Uh, I actually started work in 1974 in England when I had the Maxwell Markson organisation. The Maxwell Markson. <laughs> and I'd promote pop groups and BBC radio and disc jockeys across England. When did you get the idea then? I've to never start? had a plan. <laughs> you know, all those people say you've got a five year plan. And yeah. I've never had a plan in my life. You just kind of roll into one from one thing to the I just love what I do and I'd do it. Yeah. And so when did you come to Australia? 1977. So I was 21 years old. B born in Bournemouth in 1956. Yeah. My dad. Uh, had an aqua show, which is like an ice show, but in water with synchronized swimmers and high divers. And oh, he was wow. a high diver. And, uh, and my, 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 my favorite story about my mum and dad is they, before I was born, they were on the road and they used to have a duck that would dive into the, they'd, put it, they'd keep him out of the water all day. But at the end of the day, when they're doing a show in whatever town, they'd let the duck, you could never do that, totally incorrect now. But they let the duck out, they put it on the diving board. Of course, they just want to get in the water, so they dive in the water. <laughs> and it was called Donald the Diving Duck. <laughs> and, and then one day they're driving they're outside Oxford. And, uh, and my dad says to my mum, how good is the promoter here in Oxford? Because they could see a sign on the back of something saying Donald the Diving Duck and the Aqua Show. Yeah. And my mum says, no, no, that's the duck, the trailer from the back of the car has gone off and it's going down the hill oh, ahead of us. Joking. So we have to save the duck. <laughs> <laughs> so you must have been, were you an only child or? I've got an elder brother who's uh, much more larger than life than me. Oh, okay. And is he in Australia or is he back here? He lives in uh, Bournemouth. Uh, and my oh, mum's still there, who's 92 years old. Oh, now. wow. Mm. Oh, fair play, 92. Your parents, would they have had a big influence on you. I definitely think you. I followed him. There's an expression, I'm Jewish, and in the Jewish community, there's an expression IDB, you follow in, in dad's business. So you'll see, if you look at a lot of very successful uh, families like the Lowe's, you know, every yeah. Friday night, they'd all sit around the family and the, the table discussing business, obviously. And I'm sure the Pratts were like that and, yeah. and the trigger boss. I mean, you'd sit around the table discussing business. Is so that, it's called IDB, in dad's business. And, and my dad was a promoter. So, so I followed in that business. So up until um, your dad died when you were 15. Correct. Well, you would have been really young sitting around talking about business yeah, well, ideas. I, and... I, I, I'd obviously go to the shows. I was a spotlight operator at seven. Yeah. And, uh, and, I, and in the swimming pool, you've obviously got action. In the, in the shallow end, they put a stage up with, you know, Sinbad the Sailor or Treasure Island, Gulliver's Travels. And I'd, I'd be on the spotlight sh where the diving boards were shooting down at the shallow end. Of course, then I'd fall asleep and the action would move to this end. Of course, there's a light still shining there, so they'd have to wake me up and say, I can't do this. <laughs> so I, taught, I learned things and I'd go build posting with my dad, <laughs> bucket of paste posting. So I learned things, you know. When you came to Australia, when, when did you launch like Marks and Sparks? I arrived in Australia in 1977. Yeah. 
I did T-shirts for the federal election of 1977. I sold them for both the Liberal and Labour parties. Oh, right, OK. Uh, then I worked for an importer promoting biorhythm calculators, negative iron generators, and a wonderful range of rattlesnake heads, scorpions, tarantula spiders and vampire bats set in a preservative jelly encased in a glass sphere and mounted on a walnut base. Beautiful. That every sounds, every that home sounds, had to have one of yeah. those. Do you still have one? No. No, of course not. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then I worked at 2WS for a couple of yeah. years as their promotions manager. Yeah. And then... I started Marks and Sparks in 1982. How did it come about? Did you just represent one person? I got and fired then... from 2WS. Why did you get fired? I spent too much time on Variety, the children's charity. I was doing work for, I was helping. We were doing a secretary's day. And I went on radio, on a rival radio station, 2SM, talking to Ian McRae and the Hondick Jones. And I got back to the station out at Seven Hills, where we were then. And uh, the station manager called me and said, you're on a rival station today. I said, yes. And what have you been doing all week? I said, oh, doing stuff for Variety. He said, you're fired. But... He was really upset with me because I used to go to the executive meetings mm. and he was bald like I am now. And, and I'd walk into the executive meetings and I'd pat him on the head. And I'm sure that would have upset him. <laughs> it is tempting though. Do you know when you walk by somebody, you yeah, just have, do you have a little tempting. <laughs> bald head is nice to think. Um, okay, so you got fired and you decided to... Started then, my business. So you started your business. And then how did... That's been what, 36, 37, 37, 37 years, 37 years ago. ago? There was no internet in those days. Wow. <laughs> so how has it... Is it easier now to... Is it easier now than it was then? I think so. And then, if a newspaper wrote a negative story, mm. <laughs> there was no way of reply. Today... Fast forward 37 years, mm. you've got social media, you've got online media, you can put a story out. One, you can put a story on your Instagram feed or your Twitter or Facebook denouncing the story. Mm. And then in addition, other media will take the story and Absolutely. pick it up yeah, and yeah, run yeah, it straight yeah. away. Because everybody hates if you know if it's XYZ magazine has done something wrong and written a dreadful story about it, the others will bash it back again. Yeah. So you just, would you spend more time now putting out fires than... I've never had to put out fires. I, I, I've always been of the, of the opinion mm. that when you're doing media, 95 or 98% of the time, the media are going to do a positive story on you. Unless something's gone wrong, yeah. that's when they want to you know, stick the knife yeah. in. But Absolutely. most of the time, yeah. they'll do positive stories. If you've got a good story, ring them up, you'll get a great story. Yeah. Negative press. Like, do you know the, the saying that there's no such thing as negative press? Would you believe in that? Groucho Marx said there's no such thing as bad publicity. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I subscribe to that. Just keep going. Yeah, of course. If it's bad publicity, just keep doing the next story. You're only as good as your last story. So just keep pushing stories out. Is it water off a duck's Correct. back? I don't give a damn. I just keep going. And, and, and my advice often to people is, if you want to handle it, nowadays you can, go and put a, a, a 30, 45 second video up on, on, on your Instagram feed. Right? And just say, look, I'm really sorry about this, but, 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 but. Or this is false. They've got it wrong. That that didn't happen. That didn't happen. That didn't happen. You know, hashtag fail. And look at Donald Trump. You don't have to tell the truth anymore. You just tell lies. <laughs> and they believe it. Right? Yeah. I mean, you just push, just whack down the media. It's like playing, uh, you know, when you go to the fairground and there's that thing, with the guac, you know, whack, whack a mole. You go bang, <laughs> bang. That's what I tell people. Look, if you're on radio in a radio announcer at breakfast time, it's yeah. really hard because they're really quick. Back, just back and back down going. again. And it's the same if you've got, if you're on it, on with somebody who's being aggressive to you and are trying to, you know, say this is wrong, this is wrong, or, or mm. bash them back. When you say, has it changed since 1982? Yeah. He has changed it How in the last four years because he lies and because he tells mistruths and he and he takes the truth and he turns it. But how and do you think he's, he's flipped it to saying it's the media and it's fake news? Of course news he has. And it's, it's... Fake New York Times, yeah. fake news. Fake... He just does that. And then three months later, he might say, oh, no, it was wrong. I was wrong. But very rarely says he's wrong. He just he would never ignores say it. it. He just ignores it. And he just keeps going and keeps and going why, and keeps that's going. That's why, he, and I don't know what the latest figures are, but at one stage, you know, he hadn't done a news conference for, or, and hadn't led his press secretary to do a news conference at the White House for three or four months. They'd be, the only time the media would get anybody was on the way somewhere, like on a doorstop. And he bypasses the media by going straight to the public with his 50 million followers on Twitter. On Twitter. And so then you talk about, he talks about lies and you've worked as you know, well, as we know from your um, book on the role of Bill Clinton, um, you've worked closely with Bill Clinton and probably know Hillary well too, but they're widely disliked, Hillary's widely disliked. So why do you think that is compared to Trump? See, I don't think Hillary's widely disliked. That The well, impression look, might be, but, but she got more votes than, uh, than Trump did mm -hmm. in, in that election. Yeah. So she's not widely disliked. I mean, 
And yeah, 50 million people might dislike, but 50 million people dislike Trump. I mean, yeah. and, and again, in the past in America, not that I want to get into the whole politics thing, but no, 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 we won't. In, in the past in America, whoever was the president, you'd get behind them, Republican yes. or Democrat. Yeah. Now, it's, it, it, it was a very divisive election, well, that uh, is. Trump and Hillary. And, yeah. and who would have thought that Trump would have won the election with all the stuff a month before with, with uh, Billy Bush or whatever and the stuff sure, with the woman? Sure. I mean, it just, even his own party said, you can't get on. But he went on and won. And yes. that, that was something that nobody in the media understood, but it happened. It did. And, and he, why? Probably because his fame is when they're in the ballot box, they're voting Hillary or they know both of them, but Trump they know from TV and, and they, they love him. They, and they love him. And that is something I want to ask you. So what in, like from deal, dealing with all these celebrities, what makes a star? What are the qualities that make somebody appeal to the masses? I, I, I think when, when I, the experience I've had with people is, you know, they've got this amazing charisma about them, presence. And that is something that, for instance, in Australia, we don't, our politicians do not have that. That's you, know, yes. you, you just, you know, yeah. the, the room doesn't emanate with this glow when Scott Morrison or or Bill Shorten or out no. now when he walks in the room, as opposed, to, there's this whole surround, you know, when a President Obama walks in the room or President Bush senior, Junior or Senior or, mm. or, or, or even a Trump, anybody, when they walk in the room, mm. They've had this whole thing, you know, they've got the motorcades come up with 20 or 30 cars. They've had da 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 <laughs> You've got the, Well, got that's, the, a, that's, yeah. a, that's a physical it's thing. A high, yeah. But that's a physical thing around them. But the actual person is so charisma and... Yeah, they've got a presence about them. And they, they and the, the, I think the office helps as well. Yeah. But there's no doubt that the, the politicians and some of the superstars... You know, I've been privileged to spend a lot of time with Arnold Schwarzenegger. We just looked after John Travolta... Um, when he was here in November, yeah. and he had he was the most generous with his time, spent mm. time with everybody, and on stage he you know he was telling stories that he said he'd never told before. Say for example, now we've got so much reality TV, and you deal with some of say the well, masters. Stars. No, no, I don't think the stars. <laughs> Let's be but like, but if you think about some of the reality, and a lot of people have come from reality TV, and some of the Not but many. if, if you, you know but, Chrissy Swan, uh, Fitzy and Whipper, so Ryan Fitz, Fitzy did. You couldn't name any others, I think, off reality TV who've broken through. Off yeah. the top of my head, there's two out of... I mean, every year you've got an 80 or 90 coming through Coming now. through, yeah. I had this conversation with a couple of the guys from The Bachelor, Some, out of The Bachelor. There's, yeah. There's so many people coming through. Like, how can they all break... They can't. But the ones that do then is something unique, a little a little sprinkle of dust that they have, a little sprinkle of magic. Yeah, they're controversial. So, like, married at so first that's sight. It. So, so if you're, if you're controversial... Controversy will, will cut we'll, through for you. Yeah. And it will keep you, but it won't keep you going, though, will it? it? Won't keep you going forever, but it'll it'll give you a, you'll get an earn from it. Like you learn, yeah. You know, and if you've got a couple hundred thousand followers, yeah. you can earn a couple of grand a week or more. That's yeah. hundred grand a year. It's pretty good for yeah. going from nothing to sure. That. And how do you think people's um, attitudes towards fame and celebrity has changed in the thirty-seven years? I really don't believe it's changed, except for celebrity is. Uh, Possibly an overused word. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we always you go back a hundred years. You know, Don Bradman was really famous. He was a cricketer who, you know, had endorsements, mm -hmm. uh, had money coming in from his endorsements. So that still happens today with the modern day cricketers. They're still earning money from endorsements, more yeah. money. But then the, if inflation takes care of that. Yeah. But in terms of the, the celebrity, you still got your movie stars. You've still got TV stars. Mm -hmm. uh, you've still got famous politicians. So you've still got people who are celebrated. In, when Who Weekly first started in this Australia, in, in this country, yep. and I guess they stole it from uh, people in America, yeah. they said they wanted to write about interesting people, mm -hmm. so ordinary people doing extraordinary things, right. and extraordinary people doing ordinary things. So if Madonna takes her kids for a ride on the bike, that's yeah. a double-page spread in the magazine. Right, okay, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right? If two men get stuck down a mine in Tasmania for 12 days, that's you know, ordinary people, extraordinary circumstances. Yeah. So that's still the news, and that counts into fame. Fame can sometimes be really quick with viral stuff happening. Sure. You know, but, quick it's, 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 but fame's still there. People want to... People are more into entertainment and gossip now than they ever were. Celebrity, yeah. people want to talk about it uh, and discuss it more. So tell me about your business model, though. Say, for example, you're bringing over lots of celebrities and big names over, and politicians down to Australia. 
Um, and I think, say, for example, you offered Obama, like I think I heard you saying five or six million to try and come down. But how would you make money back on that? You put them into, you know, 15, 20,000 seat arenas and you'd sell the tickets from 100 bucks right up to 1,000 bucks. If you're making a million bucks a night, you've got to cover that. Yeah. And you get sponsorship. And, they, and, and as part of their deal, they do a private uh, uh, meet and greet and follow line for 50 or 100 people beforehand. Yeah. So you'd sell that for like half a million dollars to one company. Yeah. And, and then you'd do the you know, pre-dinner cocktail party for 500 bucks a ticket, which so includes you getting to the... Yeah, you monetize it. You're working out. Is there anybody you regret working with? No. Nobody I regret working with. No. no why would you? Like... The, fa the, the ones I don't remember, I don't remember. The famous ones, always, there's always a story. Yeah, you know, it's good. It's fun. Yeah, I know. There was I was speaking to one um, agent, and they the, one of the ways that they strike up a relationship with the the person that they're representing is say, look, I want you to tell me everything, and trust me with everything. Do you have a similar way of that? You? No, I don't, I don't ask. I don't. Even, you know, with people, I don't ask their phone number, their address, even. You know, when I first start. I just want to meet them first of all, and then see if there's if we can work together. But that, that's on the celebrity side and the and you know big star side. You just talk with them like normal people. Yeah. I'm not trying to pry them into the pry. I don't want to know about their personal life or what. You know, if they want to tell me or tell me stories, great. But I'm not that sort of person. When it comes to doing publicity for people mm. and corporations pay me money, then I want to know everything because in case there is going to be something negative coming out or positive, I want to know their background. I want to know where they were born, how they got to where they are today. I'm very much, I ask all the questions there and then I want to promote their product and, and, make, it, and make them a lot of money, make them really successful. That's yeah. my goal there. If I, and that's majority of my work is doing publicity. To, is the, to help them. And to make that work. Yeah. In terms of... Uh, the celebrity representation or as an agent when I'm trying to, you know, in the middle of trying to get God knows how many big stars over here next year. So I'm acting on behalf of promoters who want these stars. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm ringing all the people in America and in England and, and like just trying to massage deals into place that works for my client and works for the talent. And you're talking literally, you know, often a million dollars US to come and do four or five events and things like that. So it's big money. A million dollars of US to do four or five events. Yeah. It is good money. Um, and what is it then about you that, that you think has made you that like so successful? I know you talked about the keep going. Look, I never think of myself as successful. I really don't. Okay. I just, I just do what I do and I just try and make things happen for people. The main motivator and the main drive, is that what yeah, it is? I, I, I love getting a story in the paper for my clients. Like that is a turn on for me. Yeah, yeah. I, I love meeting famous people you know, and meeting interesting people. Yeah. And even when I get in a taxi and go somewhere, I always chat to the taxi driver because they've always got great stories. You know, they've come from somewhere else in the world and made a life for themselves and their family in this country, whether they've been here for five years or 50 years. I mean, yeah. it's, people are interesting. Everybody's got a story. And Everyone. So if you had to have dinner, say, with three people around a table. Dead or alive? Either. Well, dead, I'd love, I mean, I'd, I'm a big Churchill fan. Like, yeah. He's not liked here in Australia okay. because of the Gallipoli. Like he's, he was the first Lord of the Admiralty yeah. in the First World War. So, but but Churchill, Churchill Gandhi, I'd really like. <laughs> I don't know, okay. Churchill, Gandhi, and JFK. <laughs> okay, okay there we go. Okay, right. and, al and alive. Alive. Um, I really, I, I, I generally love President Clinton. Really? So, um, yeah, I'd have President Clinton at the table. Yeah, he's um, one. He's one. I'm just picturing it now. I'd, okay, I'd. Uh, I'd I really, I get on well with Carson Kresley and he's always fun. Yeah. So he'd be there. And um, third person, I suppose, you know, my brother, David. Oh, lovely. What does, what does he... Um... He just makes me laugh. Uh, he, and he, he makes everyone laugh. He's just funny. He's, he's he your genuinely old... is funny. He's your older brother, is he? Yeah. Does he come down to Australia? He's, yeah, he's the reason I came here. He came here before I did. Right. And I remember at the end of the summer in 77 in England, and uh, I said... And I don't know what, I, you know, I've been, work, I've been working all really hard that year. I've been, every week I was doing like a gig in, uh, on a Tuesday night, I had a, a pop group on in Bournemouth, the Thursday night, a BBC Radio 1 DJ, Friday, the same DJ and in Plymouth, Saturday we'd drive to Blackpool, which is the other end of the country, so and have a, have a flat DJ flat. on there on the Sunday night. I have to sell all the tickets in two days because all the holidaymakers arrived on a Saturday and left on a Saturday, uh, then drive back to Bournemouth <laughs> and then do it again. Anyway. I said, I want to go somewhere. He said, go to Australia. So I said, okay. He said, that's great. You'll love it there. So I went and got my visa. I'm at Australia House. 
And they said, do you want to go to Sydney or Melbourne? And I said, I don't know. So there wasn't mobile phones in those days. So I went and found some money. Went, click, click, click. Hi, yeah. where should I go? Sydney. I said, go to Sydney. Don't go to Melbourne. <laughs> I like Melbourne, but Sydney's miles better. Yeah. Right? And so uh, I came to Sydney because of him. And so did, when does he come down? To, uh, he hasn't to been down for a few years, but yeah. if I rang him now, he said, want to come? He'd be there like that. <laughs> Loves you, Australia. So right? yeah, yeah. You must miss him though, do you? Like if, I speak to him a lot on the phone. Yeah. yeah. It's and great I'll, with I'll, Skype. Yeah, I'll, I'll like see him at Christmas time this year and that sort of stuff. Oh, lovely. Know. Lovely. Oh, you go home for Christmas. I, I, see, I say home, even though you've been here I'll, 40 I'll, years. I'll go, I'll go and see my mum and my brother and his family. Ah, lovely. We've got questions coming through from the audience. What do you see yourself doing in five years' time? Same. Same one, thing. We'll get all of them, one word <laughs> answers. Same, okay, same, same, same. <laughs> um, you seem so resilient. Did you have any mentors along the way? John Singleton was always very kind to me. Really? And supported me. Yeah. And, uh, and would, you know, I don't know if he thought he was mentoring me, but I learned a lot from him. Yeah. And, and I've learned a lot from President Clinton as well. Anything that you could share that you would say? Sure. Uh, President Clinton always takes, he looks in, in the eye when he talks to you and he is just, cares for people. And I remember I, I did an event where he, in 2006 in Melbourne, and he'd spoken and then he was doing Q&A with the audience and one person said, you know, everybody knows you're great people handling skills, President Clinton. What's the secret of your success? And he said, you all, there's a thousand people there, said, have you all thought about who's uh, laid the tables for you for the meal you just had or who's going to be cleaning up afterwards? He says, there's a place in Africa where you walk along the street, if you see someone, you stop and you say, I see you. Actually acknowledge people. And do you think when we go into work in the morning, do we, you know, we just say hi to the receptionist and hi to the person and just get stuck in as opposed to saying good morning to people and acknowledging yeah. them. Yeah. And we left that when he'd finished speaking and doing the Q&A, we went down with his secret service. We got into the lift to go downstairs to get him to his motorcade. And there's a guy in the lift operating the lift. And as President Clinton uh, walked in, President Clinton touched him on his arm. Didn't say anything, just touched him on his arm. Then out of the lift goes, I got back in the lift to go back upstairs. And, uh, and I recounted the story I've just told you. Yeah. I said, did uh, you notice that President Clinton touched him on the arm? He said, you know what? I've been here since six o'clock this morning. It made my day. Ah. Says so it. You've got to acknowledge people. Which is the most powerful medium? at the moment now for your type of work? I, I, I think online medium is, is, is the most powerful. In the past, if I got a story on the front page of the Daily Telegraph or the Sydney Morning Herald and a store, page nine story in time, in, inside, that was enormous. Now I'll ring my client over and say, we've got the front page of the paper. Oh, but I can't find it online. It's behind <laughs> the paywall. Like, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. The, online is, is where the medium is. Yeah. And what happens is it gets picked up by everybody else as well. So if somebody breaks the story first, then others will just follow it through. So on social, like in, with Insta, Facebook, any of those? Yeah, that's, Insta. that's okay, Instagram. And, but, you know, I've got a guy, a futurist, Dr. Richard Haynes. He says, I that, think, yeah, uh, he says that by 2023, Facebook will have changed its name to Instagram. And by 2028, you won't remember either of them. 2028, that's yeah. like, what? Less than 10 years ago. Yeah, it's just the same as you don't remember MySpace. I mean, yeah. Murdoch paid 500 million for MySpace. Bebo. Or Bieber, yeah. Things go. We're going to be fast tracking. Everything's fast. Tick, they all say TikTok's the new thing. I know. Yeah, but you can't because you just learned that you're just, you're just on top of the one thing. No, and we then... only just learned it. The kids <laughs> are really ahead of the game all yeah. the time. What advice would you give to someone just joining the industry? My three tips to success yeah. are persistence, mm -hmm. enthusiasm, and focus. That's it. Just work. You know, persist. Just keep going. Push, push, push. Keep yeah. pushing on. Don't take no for an answer. Just keep going. And enthusiasm. Do it with what you want. And focus. You got a job to do. Focus, and you'll you'll succeed 100 every time. You'll always succeed. Persistence, enthusiasm, focus. And if you don't want to remember those other two words, persistence. Persistence. And actually, we had because we had Ronnie Can from Oz Harvest yeah. um, here in the show there recently, and she said the exact same thing. It was persistence, and that's how she got the laws changed for the food and persistence. That, yeah. Out of all the people you represent. Whose job have you envied the most? Mine. I just don't think. I, I, I just think I'm really lucky. I, I, yeah. I have the best time. Do you have any worries? What's your biggest worry or concern? No, I'd like to live forever, but I guess I'm going to die. But we all we all die one You'd day. You'd like to be yeah, yeah. <laughs> live forever. Who's the richest person you've ever represented, and what is the most you've ever made from a client? Love to have those figures. You know, yeah, I once earned a small fortune in one night. I had work on it to do it, but yeah. you know, like you know, 300 grand in one night or something like nice. that. Nice. Right? That was pretty cool. That and, was pretty cool. Right? 300 and, grand in one night. So what's and, 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 I, and I did a deal once for somebody which was like you know, 100 grand a year deal. So that was pretty cool too. 
you know, so th th so with that, deals. You know. Yeah, so, so 300 grand in one night, you don't have to, but like what, what did that entail? I had to, you know, put a chunk of money up, which I didn't have, I had to borrow it and make it all happen yeah. and, then, uh, and then execute it. So it was having a, one, a, like a celebrity doing an event and yeah. then you put on the yeah. whole thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was nice. And, um, and then with the deals, like an annual, say for example, you have a client that you sign up for an uh, annual fee. Like how many, how often or who would you have to work with that person throughout the week? It would well, vary from the you just, I just, I just charge 20% commission on whatever deals I get. So that's sometimes you can get nothing for anybody like because they just can't get any money for them. Others you get a chunk of money in. Yeah. Uh, in the PR world, you know, I charge anything from five grand to 20 grand a month. It just depends on how much work there is there. Yeah. And some clients I've been working for for... 25 years over 25 years which yeah. is you know a lot of time and others you know you just do a three-month campaign comes in goes out do you ever get worried about the risk i know we spoke before about bringing somebody over from the u.s and then i was worried about how much if we w wouldn't do the sale of the tickets like do you ever worry about the risk or have you ever made a big loss like I, I've, I've, yeah i've lost I've lost millions of dollars and made millions of dollars. I mean, yeah. you, you do lose money sometimes. That's the it's gambling. Promoting is a really, you know, it's a gambling thing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you can hopefully, you're educated guests and you know what's going to work, what's not going to work. Yeah. But you still can, if you don't sell enough tickets or you don't get sponsors in, yeah, you can lose money. Yeah. And that, to the first question, who was the richest person you've represented? Uh... I did some publicity when Trump was supposed to come in 2011, so he probably was worth a few bob then. Actually, but he wouldn't be the richest person. Um, is that when he sent out a letter to people saying, come for a and dinner? And a guy in, in uh, Ipswich, Malcolm Quinn, guaranteed him $2 million to do three events and three one-hour sessions. And, uh, and then about two months before, the guy said, I can't keep doing this. I've paid him one and a quarter million dollars. I don't know if I can buy the other three quarters of a million dollars. Mm. I said, well, just keep selling tickets. The whole tickets have stalled. I said, well, you'll keep selling. You've got two months. You'll sell more when it gets closer. Yeah. And anyway, he, he wound up his company. Yeah. Trump kept the one and a quarter million dollars. And uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't even ask. Um, and then the other thing was, I know you spoke about what the, the three things are for like for success, in, yeah. your, in your opinion. But I like think, purpose. I or... think giving back is really important. Like, Arnold Schwarzenegger, yeah. his five tips of success are have a vision. So for him, he wanted to be a bodybuilder and a movie star when he was a kid. Then uh, think big, not just any bodybuilder. He wanted to be the best bodybuilder in the world. And yeah, he wanted yeah. to be a leading man in movies. Third one, don't listen to the naysayers. So for him, he got to Hollywood. They said, look at the shape of your body. Maybe you could be a, you know, a, a security guard or, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, or, or an army soldier. Uh, and... And listen to your accent. Nobody with a German accent's ever been a leading man in movies. And what's your name, Schwarzer Schnitzel? How's that going to look on the posters? <laughs> yeah. And then the fourth tip was his work, work your ass off, work really hard. Yeah. And the fifth was give back. But he is. He was going from a bodybuilder and a like successful actor, politician, the whole lot. And became a millionaire from property development as yeah. well along the way. He's brilliant. No, he's. I think he's the most successful person of all time. You know. Politicians are successful as politicians. Yeah. There's sports people who might be successful in their sport. Yeah. Business people might be successful in their business, but no, there's nobody who's been successful in sport, leading man in movies, in and uh, politics. politics completely you different. Yeah. Incredible. Amazing. Well, Max, thanks a million for joining us. You're always so charismatic, and it's great to have you on the show. You're very kind. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks a lot, Thank you. Thank you.